One, one. Ready for you. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Hi, it's Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kai. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel, and today we're going to be looking at the new song from The Warning. This is Automatic Sun. Now, we have done uh, more. We did Sick, which I think... Was there another one? I can't remember. We've done more. Oh, uh, I did ha I did Hell, You Call a Dream separately on the, on the other channel, so I haven't covered that one because we wanted to... Didn't feel like we should just be doing The Warning all the bloody time because we did a lot of the warning and we got accused of doing that and being too uh, doing too much Liliac and too much the warning so yeah. even though if you actually look at the amount of other stuff we do on the channel but like people videos do, yeah and lots of other metal bands in there but apparently we were doing it but I thought it was good for us to come back to this one uh, and have a look at this it's uh, it's the single but it's been done to some live footage when's the album coming out is there an upcoming album uh, it is April 20 we're in it 28th Okay, yeah. So yeah, so it's this, is, this is a new track then. New track. Right. So, yeah, I think we should just get into this and uh, see what happens. Let's do yeah. it. This isn't a live video. This is a lot. This, oh, is, the, this is the actual album version of the song. So I like, like the production this. straight away. Very fuzzy. I think off camera it reminds me of Queens of the Stone Age, and then they're playing yeah. those natural harmonics, which gives it that that screech, doesn't it? Like as if you've got you're holding yeah. the guitar in front of a Martial stack. It's, 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 that, it's that first because one of the things you've you've brought up before about them is the lack of riff. Even yeah. Though, well, the terminology of riff. There's always a riff, but it's yeah. a lack of Inocuous, memorable riff or lack of uh, not uh, not complicated riff but lack of just something that sh sort of really stylizes or yeah it, it's sort of blends in the background a lot of the time so what's your kind of first thought on this of it coming in good start really heavy um, it's got a nice sludge guitar tone to it as well and I really like the thump of the snare listen how loud that is in the mm. mix so the new album if this is what it's going to sound like it's probably going to be the heaviest work to date I mean we've not heard any vocals yet um, but yeah this is obviously you can always hear the bass in the mix as well so yeah. how many seconds 45 good start let's hope that they actually deliver yeah you would you wouldn't have thought that was the warning just below a few opening bars because that would sounded down tuned and a lot heavier than what we've heard from them before mm -hmm. I mean I'm, you know you're the fan we, we've just covered a few videos on the channel so but yeah um, one thing I did notice from the very opening shots on a sort of earlier video we've, we've done today about youth and supporting the metal scene these are young people they're in early 20s aren't they yeah you look at the crowd their peers weren't in the front row of the crowd it's all people like us us yeah, yeah. and it was very much when they did the when they came over to the UK and they played a show at the Bush Hall uh, in Shepherd's Bush easily pretty much everyone was in their 40s 50s 60s was their demographic so it was really interesting to see the... the so the, a, the band, like The Warning, appeal to old, old school... Rockers. Classic rockers, as you Because a lot them. of people, same as Lydia, they talk about the fact that they're into their Zeppelins and they, they go, this is great to see a band coming out there that, that, that are in, taking embodiment of cool rock, just keeping it normal, keeping it rock, but... Without still creating a brand new scene and mashing two different styles together, like yeah. you said, but... It gives them credit. Why, are, them, why aren't the warning appealing to 17, 18 year olds? I know we're going back to our discussions. That's we? another debate. We yeah. should really ask Ma that. Maybe one, they are, aren't they? They're not know. by that crowd. Well, you know, you're, 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 they're not, from what you're saying. There's, from what I see in the comment section, so people that watch our. I mean, this is the problem is that you're, we're, we're looking at it from a demographic of what we're seeing on the YouTube scenes, and the people that comment on the YouTube scenes tend to be of the older generation, don't see as much youth. There are youth people in there, I'm not saying there isn't, but it's definitely, <laughs> there are youth people there. Uh, <laughs> we get old people, why can't we get youth people? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Young people. We're not, we're not going to basically split hairs on it. Uh, right, come on, let's carry on. Yeah. But somehow you 
20 seconds I actually heard early Arctic Monkeys yeah surprisingly and, and I think when we did one of their other singles they'd gone more in a garage rock type direction out there this, this is heavy rock and roll isn't it a really grungy bass line as you'd expect very strong bridge to the chorus first 45 seconds I enjoyed at this point I'm thinking I've probably already worked out the song so I'm instantly becoming lukewarm Andy we, we, you know, when the song sort of kicked in after that sort of initial surprise for me about the, the sort of, you know, mainly the guitar sound yeah. and the guitar tone, it's sort of typical warning again, um, you know, catchy, grunge rock, yeah, I think that's probably a good, a good way of putting it. I mean, I, I like the format of the video, I, I like the sort of the live shots all intercut together. There were a couple of times where the vocals were playing and, um, what's the name, Danny wasn't singing mm. to the mic, you know, so that's... I can't understand why the producer of the video would, would sort of cut it like that. It yeah. just doesn't make, why, why any, doesn't make any it. sense, you know. Yeah. Even um, if you don't sing, you just when there's vocals on, you cut to the vocal bit, yeah, or you yeah. cut to the drum, or something, yeah, something yeah. where there's not, but you never cut to a vocalist. It's almost like, you know, someone who doesn't really know what they're doing has, has, has cobbled this together, but even mm -hmm. somebody who did know what they're doing, that, that, that's a fundamental basic, isn't it, I, I'd have thought. But yeah. That's just something that sort of, uh, you know, stands out when it shouldn't do. You know, yeah. just a little, little simple thing like that. But I, I like, you know, it's a way of getting a video done, isn't it? You know, cobbling together some, some live footage and, and sort of putting yeah. it over your studio track. But yeah, it, it's, it's, it's the warning, isn't it, so far? Other than that initial sort of, I mean, is it a change of tuning guitar tone from you, for you from previous albums? Uh, okay, so this would be what, the fourth song I've heard off of this uh, new album. Oh, right. Uh, so we've heard Sick. We've heard more. Uh, there's one called Hell You Call a Dream, which I've checked out, and of course, this Atomic uh, Automatic Sun. Um, all of which come across to me as pop rock. There, there's a lot of pop culture in there, there's a lot of pop music, the harmonies, the, the choruses. I mean, that chorus is pure kind of pop sing along chorus. And there's nothing wrong with having hooky sing along choruses, but all four songs have had a very kind of formulaic. Pop rock. They got outside okay. songwriters in. I think they have. Now they've had outside producers in, but what I would say about that is that this band has full creative control over their music. So they've evolved as musicians from a young age. So I think they are finding their their sound currently, and I think their sound will change on another album. But this is where they want to be. The problem I'm having is this isn't what I will probably listen to from them or what got me into the band. So when I when when I you listen to the, to their first album and then their their last proper album, not their made EP, but the last album, Queen of the Murder Scene, is such a good album in the sense that the thought process behind the songwriting, there there's meaning behind every song. With the song Sick more and even on their previous uh, EP with things like Choke and Evolve and stuff like that and song called Money, there, there is stories they're trying to tell, but they don't have that level of detail that they did with Queen of the Murder Scene. I feel that the artistic integrity I'm less interested in now, because I don't feel, I feel that like these are just kind of fun songs with a little you bit said of- You this is the fourth person. one you've heard, so this is, this is like a, a record like releasing the singles to promote an album. Yeah. So maybe the four that you've heard and have been released so far are this sort of pop rock could be. Format and the rest of the album is more of the 
sort of creative and sort of storytelling songs that you you more you enjoy more. And the thing is, with listen to the songs, actually listen to them as standalone tracks. I can completely have them on in the van or in the car driving somewhere, and I'd I'd enjoy listening to them. But my level of interest in the band as a whole, as far as like, oh, I'm really interested in what's going to come out next has dwindled no, because I'm like it will sad, just be a commercial pop rock song that I'll enjoy yeah. when it comes out but yeah. I'm not I'm not waiting to put the album on you're like, excited like right? the Queen of the Murder scene you put it on from track one and you can follow the story from start to finish you can you can immerse yourself in if I think about the four songs that I've heard so far there I don't see me putting it on from start to finish and listen to it as a long play album yeah. I hear myself listen to it as singles but that's that's targeted at a dem- demographic of shuffle playlists etc and that that's fine but my audience or the person that I am I want to listen to an album yeah and I it feels like I'm coming down on this song as I said there's nothing wrong with this song but just I, I don't want the band to stay that they were when they were 17, 18 etc and they were writing the Queen of the Murder scene or 16 when they were writing this album because you need to evolve as a band you need to change and they, they've gone into this direction which is where they want to be as 20 year olds musicians who are also remember as they're developing they're finding their sound I mean the fact that they're two, two full albums in an EP in actually I mean, they've done two EPs as well so and this is going to be their third full length and they're only in their 20s early 20s that's a lot of progression and development most people find their sound in their 60s, 20s and they don't get around to writing an album until they're like their 20s and that'll be their first album where they've had their chance to develop and evolve their sound and find out what their own personal interests are and I think that's what's coming through here is we're seeing them get their own personal interests and they're now finding what they want to put out there but uh, the, whether the, or not that's yeah. what we want The distressing thing is want. if that's the case they, they seem to think that their audience just want verse, bridge, chorus, repeat, middle eight verse, bridge, chorus repeat the chorus at the end but you're going to be bored shitless you're right actually I think you described it well is the idea to just do say 10 songs all of them anthemic it's rock music isn't it so I wouldn't even use the term pop rock really rock music you expect it to be anthemic and have a chorus and a bridge and orthodox songs it does such. work it yeah. does, I mean because if you think it works, about but it's just boring if you think about Skid Row's first album that was all kind of hit singles now they were there was a lot more to them with solos and stuff like that there was a lot more elements to it but they were all very very hooky singles uh, and it still stands up to date I'm just not sure it's going to keep me as interested in finding out like when this comes out will I be waiting for the next album are they, are they going to do anything radical in this song we're not expecting them to no, I think we should play to the yeah. end and see what comes let's, out the rest let's of the see day. what happens
Okay, there we go, the one in automatic sun. So let's do final roundups. We've shared quite a lot of thoughts on it, but uh, Kirk? Enjoyed the first 45 seconds and then was not bowled over, shall we say, to use that term, by what came after it. We knew that it was just, they're too quick to get to the chorus, this band. Mm. It's like they're saying, look, we're good songwriters, are you ready for it? We're going to show you. No, give us an extravagant guitar riff. If you're a rock band, rock out. Don't be too quick to get to the bridge in the chorus. Although I've got to say, they were a really good backing harmonies, weren't they? Drum performance, superb in that. There's some really tasty fills, weren't there? In there. I, I, one criticism, you've got a good riff at the end, continue it for another 40 seconds. But obviously, they're, yeah, still, they're probably down, concerned about radio, aren't they? That it's going to be edited. Forget about that. You're a musician. If you, if you think that riff's good, roll with it. Yeah. Add it on for an extra 40 seconds. You know, don't just assume everyone's attention span is three minutes and 44 seconds. I remember that's with uh, an intro and outro of yeah. the audio yeah. thing, so you're down to a three minute song. You are allowed to write a five minute song, even if you're the warning. I don't think it's going to have a detrimental impact. Mm. Great, good musicianship. Uh, good bass tone, actually. Like, did you say it reminded you of Muse? Yeah, I'm getting like Muse Hysteria vibes. Yeah, yeah. This, which is interesting because they did support Muse on tour mm. and they have done a cover of Hysteria. Is it possible for a rock band to be too reliant on their bass player? She carries this band. You know, she's got a really heavy, uh, grungy tone. No, I wouldn't say. I think okay. it, it works in the sense because it's a three piece band. Um, and it makes sense with from a, a guitar point of view to enable her to have a bit more space on guitar. I think it works. I, I mean, you'd love to be the bass player in this band because you've got so much room to breathe, haven't you, and express yourself. Yeah. Which you don't really see much rock music, but okay. five out of ten for me, that's all. Um, um, the, the, yeah, like Kirk said, the, one of the best bits for me was, was that sort of uh, final riff that did end far too soon. It sounded, it sounded like the song was really going to kick on from there. That was, you know, sort of the heaviest sort of element for me. I like the chorus uh, sort of guitar riff as well. Um, it, it wasn't consistent for me to sort of, you know, think this was a great song. There's the elements that I liked, uh, the, the bits I mentioned, but then the, there's bits I didn't like where there's you know two sort of poppy vocals at times where, where they're all sort of going. Ooh. Um, but there's <laughs> bit, bit, <laughs> a bit more melodic. Yeah, <laughs> visually a really good video. I mean, the, the, the final scene, that sort of effect where the you know the images has kind of completed a circle. Um, there's some, yeah. there's some really good sort of visual effects on there, and again, what I mentioned on, on the, the first dis, uh, discussion section, there's a, 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 a section where Danny's singing and she steps away from the mic, and her lyrics are still being heard. So, you know, <laughs> such a contrast both with the video and the music, where just tighten up a few few areas, it'd been a really good song and video, but. They haven't, haven't won me over with the warning. I mean, I, I was talking to Kirk about some of the bands we've covered before. I can listen to it and I can enjoy it, but I'm never going to go back to it. And I think Warning can be one of those bands. I, I do enjoy watching them. I, I like doing these videos, but there's not enough there for me to sort of become a fan. Um, and one final point for me, I know they're sisters. I think this is the first time I've realised how alike they all look. Looking at, <laughs> looking at, looking at them yeah. in this video, they do, they do look like... <laughs> sisters who look like each other whereas before I've not really picked that up but that's that's irrelevant really <laughs> Dave the fan over to you Ooh. Yeah, okay yeah. so you know I'm impressed I can tell it's got a good hook uh, I mean I, I'm, I can still hit, sing that chorus uh, yeah look what you're doing so it's there it's an earworm it's in there it's in your brain they're playing to huge crowds they're getting on big tours if this album, More Sick, uh, Halley Color Dream and Automatic Sun was put out instead of Queen of the Murder Scene, they would be playing in bars. Oh, that's it's my food point. Because they, they would not have... The music, I think they stripped it back and thought about radio play. Yeah. You there is that, so much radio play in here. There are, there are visuals. Uh, if you think about the videos, video for Sick, video for More, they're playing up to certain visual uh, interpretations to get more focus. Now, when they did Queen of the Murder Scene, they didn't think about those sort of videos. It was all live performance stuff. They built up around. So there's a lot more calculation in what they're doing here. Yeah. In my opinion. Now, it could be musically, this is just where they want to go. Um, I've used the analogy before of it be like music as though it was like you're eating a bowl of ice cream. 
Now, Vanilla is what I usually use as the one that's the, the boring. The, this is not a vanilla ice cream song. This is more like chocolate ice cream to me. So it's quite nice. It's quite interesting. But it's one flavour. I'm not getting... I, I want my Rocky Road. I want my mint chocolate chip. I want, I want a big freaking banana sundae in there in my music. But I'm not getting it in this. This this is nice. And I like a big bowl of ch chocolate ice cream, which is what I'm getting from here. But it is just one thing. It's not enough to make me be interested. I genuinely feel that if this had been the music they put out back in whatever year it was now, uh, when Queen of the Nerd 2012, or no, 2015, something like that, when uh, Queen of the Nerd scene came out and they were building their following up, I generally don't think they'd have built a following up from it because the songs weren't, aren't interesting enough. Yeah, you're right. They're poppy, they're catchy, but when you've got songs called, like, uh, they had a song called Hunter and Psychotic, and they were talking about the story of a guy who's praying after his uh, this woman, uh, and the, the, the murder, uh, and the, the opposite of the woman praying after the man, I can't remember now after the word, uh, but you've got songs like Dust to Dust in there, and they're dull knives, and they're talking about the story, and it takes you on a story and a journey, and we've now come ten years later, and we're doing songs called Sick and More and how do you call a dream it's all about more about relationships and just it feels very generic the topics they don't feel yeah. like I'm not connecting with them on a, on a content level whereas I was in, really interested about the story now the song is the, just a song does it feel like the suits in the music industry have just got hold of this band now there's a lot of people that said they have now the outside based. producers will be saying no cut that no the radio you know, don't have a change of key here. Make sure it's 120 BPM. I, I genuinely I bet they've gone through a checklist. It seems like that, doesn't it? I also think that they would probably have thought better as a band and said, we need to build a more commercial hook into the songs mm -hmm. to make better videos, to make more, to gain that following. Because at the end of the day, this is a business for them. This is oh, a career. That was, that, that was and so they have to think about it. So do you assume well. that people have got poor attention span, not really much interest in music? Are there the people they're aiming for? It's like, oh, 90% of people don't really understand music, they like to whistle to it, and as long as it's not too complicated, they're the ones we're going to give it well, to. Well, they're going for cross they're 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 going, going, They are going for a festival crowd audience who are, are basically Spotify playlists. And this will get radio play. This will, whether radio play is important anymore, but yeah, they will I mean, get who it. Who listens to radio? Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, my, my thoughts from, from what you both said is, you know, analysing, or Dave, your reference to, uh, you know, the previous material, if, if they are, you know, trying to be more commercial, if they are listening to their record label, if they are trying to, you know, make some money or, or be more successful sort of mm. in, in a monetary sense, can you blame them for that? Uh, you know, and they'll do it. That, that will, well, that's that that's will rock do and roll, it, yeah. isn't it? You know, they, they can say, no, we're, we're going to have songs about psychotic relationships and what, what was the... Other oh, songs you mentioned on the, yeah, like the previous album, yeah, you know, more more sort of deep subject matter for the songs, or they can be record label friendly, radio friendly, money making style. And every songs. band has. I yeah. mean, if you think back to Metallica, went off down that road with Load and Reload. You have Megadeth went down there with Cryptic Writings and Risk. They went down a commercial route because they were thinking about radio play and radio. now for things like Megadeth, when you went down the thing with Risk and Cryptic Writings actually good albums when you go back in hindsight that and it. at the time you were like what the fuck are you doing but isn't, isn't this where music becomes stagnant though if a band's locked into that mindset where it's the outside producers the industry the vampiric suits in the industry are saying no you need to do this this formula our market research shows that people's attention span is you need to hunt within the first 40 seconds we want 10, 10 songs if you say yes we'll advance you $100,000 for the next two months and we'll pay for you to go and record this in LA yeah keep doing that but it, it just cheapens your art eventually if everyone did this music just becomes stagnant it's all about second but guessing what a fucking dumb audience wants to listen but to but what you then do is you have the comeback album after that so you then come out after a commercial album you come back with the artistic album yeah. which basically everyone goes into return to form we saw that with what was it Suicide Silence yeah true did yeah. that they, they went off and did a commercially new metal type thing and then went back to a, they all go well it's an amazing return to form and suddenly they got hyped again whereas if they hadn't done that crappy new metal type one 
Yeah. People wouldn't have been talking about that follow up album because it would just been, and they probably wouldn't have had the hype they had on the follow up album about how great it is. I mean, am I being cynical to me? Yes. When you go in this <laughs> direction, it's almost <laughs> as if you're saying, what do we do to appeal to people who are almost apathetic about music? That, that's what it seems to be going to. I like, think you've got to take advantage of, of it's the pop rock opportun- opportunities exactly. like this. Otherwise, people are just going to be, as it's you like, say, playing bars for the rest of life and not being successful. You've got, mm-hmm. you've got to sometimes bite the bullet and, and listen to the, the corporate suits and See, the, be- the best release an album the they think you should release. The mainstream comes to them, the Cure, Depeche Mode, the whole thrash metal movement. Can you believe it? In five years of Kill em All, you've got the Clash of the Titans tour. There was no compromise in there. So, I mean, you have got examples where you can do what you want and the mainstream will come to you. They're chasing the mainstream. They are the mainstream. But it seems like they just want to chase that and second it's guess what bigger and better. Wants. I mean, the thing is, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. They're getting bigger audiences, bigger festivals, bigger tours. They're, they're, they're playing on every festival. Well, so that's the marker, so. isn't it? The, the, the album sales from this, the type of shows they're doing... You know, it's a decision that we'll, we'll, we'll see. It'll be Spotify monthly streams. Well, that's that'll be interesting. Be recorded, yeah. I think yeah. it'll be interesting to see. I think I've said this on the previous video. Is I'm, I'm intrigued to see where they are in five, ten years' time. Because I don't see them doing this within five. I think this is a transitional period where they are finding. They knew where their sound was on the previous one. They did evolve. They did choke. Now they wanted to use more, <coughs> more commerciality in their sound, more pop elements, because uh, Power on Drums is a huge fan of the Japanese uh, animes and uh, okay. K-pop, and K-pop, so she yeah. really likes that whole visual visual look, so you can understand why the pop elements come in, because they, they do like pop. The challenge will be is, I think, if they do, after this album, if they do another album and it's all pop, they are going to alienate a lot of that early... People will hang around because they're just waiting for a new return to form, in my opinion. But this is this is just going to be a very poppy album for me. Generic. Albums. What's funny though is I've read someone's put a comment on this going, "Oh my god, the the riff at the start of Automatic Sun is so heavy." Everyone that says they're not a metal band, they need to shut up. That's one of the heaviest riffs I've ever heard. I enjoyed the first one. It's a it groovy it riff. Yeah. It ain't heavy. It's, it's heavy. It's, it's, it's heavy compared it's, it's, to what I've heard from the warning before. It's a distorted tone. Yeah, and, but it's like down, down, da 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 da. I mean, it's it's a bassy, bluesy. It's actually a bluesy groove. Yeah, 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 it's good breath. But when they go on about how it's one of the heaviest riffs, I'm thinking bloody hell. Then your experience of heavy rock or metal is very limited if that's what you're. Well, yeah. it's got a good tone on it. But anyway, there we go. The warning and automatic sun. Now, if you enjoyed our video today, please do like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the video sometime very soon. Take care.